Would you rather get fucked by Mandingo up the arse or get bakaki by 50, 65 year old Germans and your dad? Let's talk about Zero. Um, obviously, it's necessary to get done so you can hit targets. I shouldn't have to explain why you should Zero. It's just a thing you should do. All right, so before we talk about actually zeroing a rifle, uh, let's talk about a little bit of theory that goes behind zeroing a rifle. So, as you can see, I have a video camera here, um, and I have a whiteboard, so. So first, let's go through the theory of fire. So the theory of fire is very, very in-depth. I'm not going to cover everything. I'm just going to cover the primary definitions, just so you can sort of understand what is actually happening when you fire your rifle uh, in conjunction with your sights. So, all right, so let's start off with, we have a target. Let's draw a really, really shitty rifle. That's the barrel, and that's our sight. Obviously, I'm not a fucking artiste, but um, yeah, you get the fucking point. The first thing we're going to talk about here is uh, what's going on with our rifle. So, I've got a few different colors here, so let's pick uh, blue. Okay, so, we have our line of sight. Super simple, what you look at is what you see. So, if I could draw this kind of straight. All right, our line of sight leaves our sights, comes across and we're looking at our target. Pretty self-explanatory. So the bore of your rifle is not pointing directly at the target because obviously once the projectile leaves the bore, it's being dragged back down to the ground by gravity. This happens for a few different things where muzzle velocity, let's say for instance the muzzle velocity of this rifle we're firing, let's just say it's 800 meters a second. That's not constant, that's at the muzzle, that's why it's called muzzle velocity. If it was constant, obviously, it would just keep on going forever. But because the lack of propellant now behind it now that's left the bore, air density um, and gravity are all going to affect that, and it's going to gradually slow down. The more it slows down, the more gravity affects that projectile and pulls it close to Earth, which is why you have a trajectory, so the round comes up and then comes back down. In order to get the bullet onto the target at range, you need to have the bore facing higher than the target and to, able to, to be able to lob it down. Obviously, let's think of a gridiron player, if he throws a ball, if he wants to throw to his mate at the other end of the field, he's not gonna throw it directly at the, um, at the other person. He's gonna to have to arc it up to make it come down. That's just physics. Uh, let's get a green pen and let's draw it out. Bore. So the axis of our bore is gonna go, and depending on the range, but it's gonna go up, and it's gonna be above the target. That's the line straight through the ball. This obviously changes the different ranges you fire at. If you're doing really, really close stuff, you've got to take into account um, a height of the ball, etc. So if it's really close in this part here, where the sights and the bore are so uh, differentiated, you have a height of the bore issue. So if you're doing like close quarter shooting, stuff like that, you've got an animal that's really close, you have to aim higher than what you think you would because the bore is so much lower um, and they don't intersect yet, so just keep that in mind. So we've got the axis of the bore and we have our line of sight. When our bullet leaves, it's going to jump up. I'm not going to talk about the full ballistics of um, intermediate and external ballistics in this video, but just know that it comes out and it jumps up in the air. It goes higher than its axis of the bore. Let's use our orange pen, we're going to draw this in. Now where this line it's going to come up and it's going to cross our line of sight. It's then going to come up, it's going to arc, and it's going to come back down onto the target, which is the other end of our line of sight. 
So it's intersecting there, and it's intersecting at our target. When a bullet is crossing our line of sight, coming back into our line of sight, that is known as zero, which is why it's called zeroing when you're sighting a rifle. Now that we understand that, let's talk about um, the first thing we do when we sight in a rifle. Now, if you've already previously shot and sighted in, then this step can be omitted, but if it's a brand new rifle, for instance, or a brand new sight that you've put on or taken one off and put it back on, this is advisable to do. Not, don't have to do this, but it's advisable, and that's called bore sighting. You could just put a sight onto a rifle and fire, but if that round does not hit the paper you're firing at, then you have no idea how to adjust that round to get it onto target. I mean, you can by splash off the ground, but it's kind of, kind of hard. So what you should do is align your axe of the ball with your line of sight before you fire it, and that way you have a greater possibility of striking the target with your first couple of rounds, and that way it makes it easier, quicker, and cheaper for you to use your rifle. So once again, we're gonna have a target, and we're gonna have our awesomely drawn rifle. You can tell that I failed art, that's cool. That's fucking shit ass. What you're gonna do is put your um, rifle down on a fucking tripod, uh, sandbag, um, a backpack, whatever you can, just to get it sit nice and stable. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna look, you're gonna take the bolt out if it's a bolt action rifle, or if you've got a rifle that you can't see through the back of the bore on, like a lever action, pump action, anything like that, then you might have to use a bore sight um, scope, and all that is, is it, it has an adapter that fits in your bore, it'll come up and it'll cover up your sight, and you can use that. That'd be the best way, or you can sight it in by shooting at a closer range, get it on the paper, and then just gradually step out, but we'll get to that when we're going into shooting. Let's say for instance, like bolt action, we're gonna look through the back of the weapon, and we're gonna align the bore with the target. So, here's my awesome eyeball. All right, you're looking through the bore, and you're aligning that to the target. And then you're going to get through your sight and you're gonna point your sight at the same target. So, now we have our bore and our sight pointing at the same thing. Now if we think back before we had those things intersecting at a different part before because of the range, don't worry too much about that. Um, you're probably gonna shoot, you're probably gonna fall short. However, you will be on the paper and that way you can make an adjustment later on. So, bore sighting is super simple to do. Um, it can be omitted, but it will help you achieve it quicker. And obviously ammunition costs you money, so therefore cheaper. Let's talk about uh, group theory real quick. So, you, I've actually seen a couple of videos on YouTube which I think are pretty funny. Yeah, they work, but eh, I'm not a fan. Um, these things are like two shot, uh, zeroing where you fire one shot, you hold your rifle real still and then you wind uh, your sight to where that first round landed and then you shoot again and you're magically fucking bang on the target. Yeah, I just don't like it, I think it's shit. So, when we're sighting in our rifle or when we're zeroing, what we want to be doing is firing groups. Now the reason we're firing groups is because we're taking into account the human error that is imparted onto the weapon when we fire it. So if you're not the best at trigger manipulation or if your position is not the best, um, when you move to fire or to squeeze the trigger and fire the round, you may impart movement onto the rifle. Now if you do that, obviously the round is not going to go exactly where it was supposed to go because you've imparted an error onto it. So if we fire groups, we're having an average of rounds to sight into, so that way it's already taken into account how good or how bad of a shot you are. When we shoot, we're going to shoot minimum three round groups in order to get an average um, when we are zeroing a rifle. Now, before we talk about shooting and zeroing, we need to talk about group theory. These fucking drawings are getting horrendous. <laughs> this is as rough as Hessian underpants. All right, there's our fucking rifle. Here is our first target, and here is our second target. So, let's for argument's sake say that this one here is 100 meters, and this one here, let's say, is 200 meters. So, when we fire, um, we're gonna make a group. All right, so let's say, for instance, um, our first round leaves, and hits here. Second round leaves, and hits here. Third round leaves, and hits there. All right, so one, two, three rounds. All right, that's in a group. If we were to take those trajectories and continue them on to the next range, the group is going to get bigger because of the um, rule of subtension. So if 
um, one mil is one meter at a thousand meters, then obviously we can scale that back to this range. But just think about it, it's getting bigger and bigger. So this will bring in the argument of NOA and uh, mils. Uh, NOA takes into account this for you. So you have, you know, one minute of angle at 100 meters is going to be, or 100 yards because it's all fucking imperial, um, is going to be one inch. So one inch, 100 yards, one MOA. At 200 meters, two inches would be one MOA, or 200 yards, two inches would be one MOA. I don't like MOA, I think it's fucking confusing. An American idiot bought and bored with the fucking metric system because imperial is shit. However, just think about it is the group uh, is getting bigger. So if we were to take these same lines and continue them on straight, obviously I can't draw that straight, but let's have a crack. All right, so on the same size target at two different ranges, we can see that this group is only this big, but this group is this big. So that in short, obviously it's a little bit more in depth than that, but that in short is group theory. We now know in basic terms what our theory of fire is. We know in basic terms how to bore sight a rifle, um, and we've talked briefly about group theory. So when we fire to uh, zero a rifle, we're going to be firing in groups. If we were to fire single rounds and adjust off that, we're going to be chasing ourselves and we're going to waste ammunition, thereby wasting money. So if you fire and you had a round, let's say this is a target, had a round land down here, if you then adjust to that, you might have only hit there because of you flinching and you snatched the trigger. You might have actually hit there if you were firing completely still. So if you adjust it to this one here and then fire again, you have the potential of landing off the target, thereby undoing all of your bore sighting and having to start again. So do not do that. That's our actual cross on the target. This is um, our sight, looking at the same thing. All right, we fire, and we're gonna fire a group. All right, one, two, three, bang, bang, bang. All right, that's where they've landed. Obviously, aiming at the center every single time. Um, then we're gonna calculate that and find out where the mean point of impact was from that, which is pretty easy. We're gonna pick two of these and draw a line. We're gonna go halfway from that. We're gonna draw a line. One third of the way down that line there, that is going to be the center of that triangle of rounds. You can have those targets that have the grid lines already on them, so at 100 meters it'll be 25 mil grids, will be usually one click on your site, depending on your site, um, and then you would count them and you go, okay, I need to come up five clicks and left five clicks. You click that in, and then you aim back at the target, you fire again. All right, we're going to fire again. Um, let's say they landed here, so to calculate that main point of impact again, Let's pick these two now, those two, halfway, and then one third. All right, there's the main point of impact. We need to adjust that again. We readjust it, relay on the center, fire again. One, two, three. All right, main point of impact. Boom, boom. All right, yep, cool. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm in the center of the target. That's zeroing um, really, really basically in a nutshell, super simple stuff. It's super simple stuff. I hope you got something out of that. And uh, like always, enjoy your day. So let's go. Oh, zo, not zo. So when we fire to, sorry, when we fire to sighting, when we, uh, 